Hey, are we live? Are we live? Can you guys hear me, see me? There we go. All right. Oh, we've got eight people. Let's give it a minute or so and see how many more, uh, see if a few more people show up before we get started. Wow, a lot of latency. Perfect. Audio levels are good. Too hot, too cold. Just iced tea today, guys. None of that funny stuff. Did enough of that last night. All right. Um, so what we're going to do today is Ray over at Cohesion 3D uh, has provided me with a um, his smoothie mini upgrade kit that's intended and designed for the DI3 platform. Um, it's intended to replace the Melzi board inside of here so that you can add auto leveling and, and have better control. Um, it's a nice upgrade. So Ray has provided the kit to me, asked me to shoot a video and document the process of doing the upgrade so that people uh, buying the board have a, a reference point on how to, uh, to do that upgrade. So um, I'm going to try to watch the chat where I can. Um, I do ask, and I'll try to follow questions or answer questions. Um, Ray is also in the chat from Cohesion 3D. So technical questions, I'm going to try to defer over to him to answer um, so I can focus on the build. Uh, I will ask that anyone with, with questions, I'm happy to answer what I can, but please try to stay, since this is a sponsored build, please try to stay focused on what we're doing today. Um, We'll, we'll have other times set up for general purpose Q&A or, or just general 3D printing. So let me show you what, what comes f with the kit that Cohesion 3D sent out. Let me see if I can switch my camera view here. There we go. Okay, so in the kit, you get the, uh, the Cohesion 3D mini board. I currently have it attached to a printed plate, and um, Ray has this available. And if you can see, what I did was I just used motherboard standoffs to lift it off, so there was a little bit of room for air cooling underneath it. But you can mount that however you like to there. And the mounting pattern on this should mate up to and mount directly to where the existing Melzi board is. Um, so that's part one of what comes with this kit. As an, as an option, you also have the LCD bracket here, um, which allows you to use a RepRap GLCD display here, uh, which is also available with the kit. You get a handy dandy little splitter for your Z axis, uh, for your steppers. Uh, optionally with the kit, you can get a preloaded SD card that already has the configuration files set up for the, uh, the DI3, the Maker Select, or the, uh, the Wanhao DI3, or the Cocoon Tech for those down in Australia. Um, you get your needed four stepper drivers here, and I broke one out. And you also get the wiring with it. Um, and then they also have this wonderful, uh, the drawing that tells you where, where and how everything hooks up. So that's available on their website for download. Um, 
the I think that's everything. Um, I, I believe Cohesion is still working on documenting the, the final process for everybody, so I don't believe that is actually available yet. Um, part of, that's part of what we're doing here today is, is to uh, help develop that documentation for them. Now, a few early things to point out about this. Um, because this board goes on the inside and the SD card is on the board, you lose access to, if you can see it on the main cam there, you lose access to both the USB port and the micro SD port on the side of the, the box here. So what you're going to want to do, um, what I'm doing here is um, I've just got myself a long USB cable and I'm actually going to kind of leave it permanently attached and I'm going to run it out of the back of the box with the bundle of, of wires that come with it. Um, optionally, you can add Ethernet to this board as well so that you could just connect to it and drop your files over. If you are someone that likes to print from SD cards, they do make S micro SD card extenders, which are just short extension cables. Um, so when the board is connected inside like that, you can run a short extension cable and, and either run it out the back or run it out the side so that you have access to that SD card. Um, that's not included by default as part of the kit, but that's something that you can pick up off Amazon for just a few dollars. So um, the other part of the kit here that I did not mention is there's a little bit of wiring, a few connectors, a few pins for just a few of the items that need to be re-terminated. Most of the connections um, look to be drop fit, basically plug and play. But for the few items that are not, um, they've provided the connectors so that you can snip the ends and, and modify those as needed. So I'm going to be kind of winging this. Um, I've, I've done enough printer upgrades, so I, I have a good idea of what we're doing. And said Ray's in the chat, so he can coach me through anything that I'm not aware of. Um, so with that, let's see if we can get this thing started. What I'm going to do, let's see here, is um, I'm going to slide these out of the way momentarily. I'm going to slide this over here. And let's put the camera view like that. So we can try to uh, see what we're doing from both angles here. All right, so the first things that we're going to have to do to break this thing apart is to remove all of the screws from the bottom. Um, if anybody's ever popped these apart. So let's find the... Correct Allen wrench size. There we go. I'm going to break out the power tools. Let me mute the mic for a second so that you don't have to hear it while I pop these out. Okay, so what I want to add for now is if you can see it in that upper shot, I only removed the perimeter screws. I didn't remove the four inside screws. The four inside screws are what hold the power supply in. Um, so we don't necessarily want that to just come loose and drop. So we'll take the power supply off if needed after we pull the, unit, the, the control box apart. Um, there's also four screws on the back, so let me mute the mic again and I'll pull those out.
Okay, so now that these screws are loose, this back piece comes off and we'll just lay loose. And this can be, should just slide out, I believe. Slide the two apart like that. And so now we have the power supply separate from the, the board. And we can see the board down here inside. And we have the power bundle here to the back plane. So I'm just going to try to reorient this a little bit and see if I can get myself a little bit more room to work. All right, so first thing that I'm going to do, and it's always a good idea, um, I'm going to use my phone and take some pictures of the board and where everything is connected. And maybe overkill, but uh, I want to to see how everything goes. There we go. So I do this for two reasons um, that, that take the pictures. One is that if something ever happens to the printer and I need to put the original Melzi board back in uh, so that it can be sent back to the manufacturer for warranty work or for whatever reason, I've got documentation of where all the connectors and everything go. The other part of it is this allows me to, as I'm, I'm modifying and working on things, this allows me to um, you know, have, have a reference of what cables go where, because most of them are color coded. And so I can reference the picture to the labeling to match those up to the new board. So we're going to start, oh, and they hot glued all these in now. That's a change. We're going to start by pulling these connectors out one at a time uh, using my fingers as best I can. Yeah, they've got little dabs of hot glue on there now on each connector, which is, is different. And that's actually a good idea. If you ever do have to put the original one back in, um, remember to reapply that hot glue. I think that would be a probably a good idea. Definitely does make it easier, or I'm sorry, more difficult to get them out. Um, Okay, so dot dot goes to E temp. Okay. Wow, this hot glue is a pita to get out here. I don't see a lot of uh, action in the chat. We is uh, is it refreshing for me or am I broken? Or are you guys just being quiet? Well, shoot. Okay. 
this glue actually makes these very difficult to get off because I can't lift this up to show you, but if it can zoom in, it actually pulled the entire connector off with it. Fortunately, that should just push back down onto there. Okay, so that's all but the power connectors. So let's let the uh, let's let those ones out. So everything is now disconnected except for the LCD display. Um, what I'm going to do quick, if I can find my Allen wrench here, we're going to pop out the other board, the original Melzi. There is a isolation washer there and the screw. Um, you want to make sure that you keep those both together. Uh, Keith, the, the, for most people, the number one reason to do this upgrade is going to be to add the ability um, to put something like a BL Touch um, onto it and or to get updated firmware. Um, now granted, the, the, this board runs a smoothie firmware. It doesn't run Marlin. Um, it's also for people that have the the V1 or the early V2 Melzies that didn't have the, uh, you can see this is the newer version, so it has just the, the direct connector for power instead of a, a, a socket and plug like these guys for power. If you have one of the earlier ones, those are the ones that were prone to burning up and, and causing fire, um, or at least frying something. So if you have a burnt out board and, you're, and your printer's out of warranty, that would be another big reason to do the upgrade. Um, but from a purely functional standpoint, like this printer, for example, is, uh, is brand new because I did have to warranty it because my other board was an older one that fried. Um, the number one reason to upgrade is most, mostly going to be to add auto leveling. Um, add the ability to add a BL touch or whatever type of sensor that you'd like. Oh, hey, Paul. Welcome to the chat. Um, okay, we're going to pop the display off of here also, and that knob does not want to come off there. Okay, Ray, have you pulled these knobs before? Are they just press fit? Looks like it. Okay. What I did there, if you guys didn't see it, I just used a set of tapered needle nose pliers um, here. And with the knob, as I slid it under, that way as it got in, the taper pushed it off. A uh, great way to remove knobs without uh, damaging the, the finish of what's underneath. Um, old guitar repair trick. So let's pop this LCD off here. Ah. 
LCD is probably the hardest thing to get out because of the angle of the edge here where the screws are at. Um, I don't have one with me, but if you have a, a ball tipped hex set, that would probably make that a lot easier because of that angle. So there is the, the stock Melzi LCD out. Um, I just want to show you guys, if, if anybody's asking or wondering why we have to change out the LCD when it looks very similar to the other, the LCDs for the Melzi are proprietary. They only have a single ribbon cable versus a pair of ribbon cables like most of the others use. Oh, hey, Jaden, how are you? Um, but anyway, so it's a proprietary connector and signaling type between the LCD and the Melzi board. So it's not comp cross compatible to, uh, to ramps or smoothie boards or any other platforms. Um, okay, so I've got this shell emptied out now. The LCD is out and everything's hollow. Um, I'm going to look at doing two things here on this. Let's slide this up here before we start wiring it up. Um, first thing I want to do is I'm going to test fit this bracket and I want to make sure that these screws are long enough and to go through it, and that all of my holes line up. So, in this case, it does not look like it's going to sit well, um, or that the screw is long enough to go through there with that little plastic washer that comes with them. So let's take that off and we'll see how that goes. Yeah, that seems to work better. I'm not going to put all of the screws in. I just want to um, put two of them in for now. And these actually feel like they may be a little bit too short. Um, with this bracket because of the thickness of the bracket to grab those studs underneath there. So I think it's going to hold but it doesn't have a lot of threads. So something to consider is um, I believe those are M3s. They, they look to be M3s. Um, you may want to consider it's not part of the kit unless Ray decides to add it but you may want to look at picking up slightly longer M3 screws. Um, or hex bolts to hold this on. So we're going to take that back out. Um, I want to wire everything on the bench outside of the enclosure first and then we'll, we'll go back and mount it in the enclosure once it's all wired. But I want to be able to, uh, to test it first, um, you know, outside of, outside of the enclosure because once we get the it, well, A, it'll be easier to wire and access the uh, connection points, but also um, once we get everything wired up, I mean, it'll, it'll drop in easier. Um, but we're also going to have to set the, the voltage reference on the uh, potentiometers for the, uh, for the stepper drivers. So that looks to me like it would be a lot easier to do with the board sitting on the, on the bench. Uh, perfect, Ray. Um, okay, and I want to drop this on. Also, want to note um, as the 
the GLCD is optional in the kit. You can buy and provide your own, or you can get the one from Cohesion 3D that they provide. I do want to note that even though it has an SD card slot on it, that is not active or used um, with Smoothie. So let's see if. And I'm not going to screw that down, but I did just want to make sure that all of the holes line up with the studs. Um, I did not think to do it, but if you, can, if you can see here, there's a gap on this style display. There's a gap between the red board there and the front LCD board, so the controller board and the LCD. There's a gap between there at all four locations. Here, 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 and here. Um, it's often, it's not mandatory, but it's often recommended to print yourself a little spacer. And if you look on Thingiverse, um, if you look on Thingiverse for cases for this, or, or covers for the, uh, the RepRap discount uh, GLCD, a lot of them include those spacers in the files. Um, yes, the GLCD adapter is necessary. Uh, thanks, Ray, for pointing that out. The, um, but the spacers do keep these from bouncing up and down as you tighten them down. So a lot of people recommend putting those in. I didn't think to do so, so we'll try it without them. And if need be, I'll add those back in later. Um, so for now, I'm going to set this back aside. I'm going to... Push the wiring. I'm going to set this aside for now as well. Um, I'm going to bring out the stepper drivers here and prep those. Now, I did do, before the stream here, um, I did do a little bit of pre testing. So I took the controller board and mocked it up just with the power supply on the bench because um, I wanted to make sure that there weren't any issues, uh, you know, out of the box um, with it with it powering up or anything or or that I didn't try all of these stepper drivers, but I did you know at least want to power on the board, make sure the display worked and everything. So I did all that pre uh, pre stream offline. Um, so that's always a good idea to do as soon as you get it before you start disassembling your printer. And we're just just putting the heat sinks on the stepper drivers here. The i3 Plus, uh, I'm going to have to punt that one over to Ray. I believe he's been looking at, at what it would take to do that. So I do not know the answer to that one, or if it's been yet determined. All right, so our stepper drivers are all set. Now, we're going to bring out the drawing here, um, which you guys probably can't focus on. But let me see if I can hold this up. It does show the orientation of the steppers. It, if you're using the, the included 4988s or if you upgraded to uh, DRV 8825s, it does show the orientation. So in this case, the or orientation uh, to insert the steppers is with the potentiometer towards the edge of the board. So we're going to grab this guy here. And we are going to make sure that all of the pins go in. And get that seated. 
And we'll do that with the other three and repeat this process. Um, I like to install the stepper drivers before I wire it up. It doesn't really matter, but it's a personal preference. There we go. Last one. Okay, so what we've got here, if I can get it to focus. So we have all four of them installed there. Now, Smoothie uses um, a little bit of Greek terminology to differentiate for their axi. Uh, that's slightly different than most Cartesians are used to. So you have your typical X, Y, and Z, or Z. Um, for your steppers, they're going to start at Alpha Bravo Charlie, and or or whatever the Greek equivalent of that of that is, ABC, um, and, and start working up from there. Now on the board here, just to show you the other connection points, um, this header is for the 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 ones with pins here, or I'm sorry, the the holes the the plug-in header, style header, is for the Ethernet expansion board available for this, um, which we're not doing today. And this header is for the, the LCDs. Um, then we have our end stops and thermistors on the edge here. Um, these are heat bed and these are blue connectors here are heat bed and thermistor and one of them is actually a power in for the heat bed and then this is your main power in so those actually have to be driven independently that's it's a neat feature and I think that comes into play more with the lasers but that allows you to drive your board say from 12 volts but heat your bed or your hot end from 24 if you have a different voltage there um, these connectors we're not going to use these are for the uh, is it the K40 laser compatibility of this board um, upgrading? And then these other pins inside here we're not going to use today. One of the things also that it has here is it has two additional um, headers over here in this corner. That These are two micro MOSFETs that are uh, available for using with a fan. So if you wanted to take your hot end fan um, and your blower fan, uh, so one of them's for the blower, but there, as a MOSFET for your hot end fan. So if you didn't necessarily want your hot end running fan running all of the time, you have the option of landing that here uh, for your fan. Um, there's also a servo header here that's available if you wanted to um, add the expansion of a, a, a BL touch or, or other. Uh, no, I'm sorry, the white one here is the servo header. This one, this is a remote kill button header. So if you wanted to, um, on the board you have a, uh, a reset button here and then a kill button here. Um, and you could remote this kill button out outside of the enclosure if you wanted to. Um, in the case of this particular printer, it's probably easier just, unless you wanted to run that up to the front of the enclosure yourself, it's uh, probably easier just to hit the power and trip the power. And I know people that have dealt with the Melzi boards, let me reach over and grab that. You can see the big green connectors and you can see these tiny little blue ones here. Um, common logic would tell you that these are our larger connectors and can handle more current, more amperage. Um, and likewise, you can see the MOSFETs, uh, no you can't because the MOSFETs are all covered with um, heat sinks here. But um, I've been assured by Cohesion 3D, by Ray, that these MOSFETs, even though they're tiny, are, are actually able to handle, uh, without using an external MOSFET, they're able to handle the load of the bed and the hot end on here, and that these connectors, even though smaller, are rated for more current. Yeah. Oh, uh, what is this guy here? Oh, yeah, and you have an aux 5-volt header here, too, uh, if you wanted to drive an LED or something off of that. 
So that's available to you too. Um, Ray, how much current is available on that? Can you, um, you know, for driving for driving LEDs or whatnot? All right. Uh, let's see here. I guess let's move on to wiring and look at our bundle and see what we have. Um, I'm going to carefully snip loose this wire tie. I want you to make sure that you cut the wire tie and not any of the cables in the bundle. And let's separate these out so we can see what's going to need to go where. So these are our hot end power leads, I believe. No, I'm sorry. These two are the bed power leads. Uh, this guy looks to be the fan. Let me go back to... Let's go in the main view. I don't know if you guys, how well you guys, guys can see this, but let's try to just separate these out. So these are, are all of your, the two whites, the black and the red. And this connector here are going to be all of your f steppers, your one, two, three, four, five steppers. And this is going to be the power to the hotbed. This goes over to the power supply. And I'm going to assume that is the fan f uh, for, the, uh, for the hot end that's constantly on. So let's pull that back out of the way. Let's snip this other wire tie here. Okay. And let's sort through this bundle. Okay. So we've got these two guys. One of these two is not like the other. Okay, that one is labeled fan. This one is labeled hot end. So those are going to be our fan and our hot end. And these are going to be our thermistors and end stops and such. And with these guys, that is why, because we have black ones with black, we have white ones with black, uh, black ones with red. And one of these had a white stripe on the cable. Yeah, so that one is white with a white stripe. This one's not. So this is where we're going to default back to those pictures that we took on the phone uh, a little while ago so we know which ones go where. So now we need to look at the power supply here. Um, let's try to... Let's see if I can get this out of the way. So first thing we're going to do is look at pulling this off the power supply. I'm going to loosen this up. By the way, I didn't say it at the beginning of the stream, but it goes without saying. Make sure everything is unplugged. Um, common sense, I know, but okay. So there's R two. Now the Red black is going to be the common. The red is going to be the hot. This is for our fan header. And so we're going to tuck that aside. This is, since that's for the hot end, or I'm sorry, the, um, for the fan. Um, Ray, question for you in, let me jump over to the chat to catch up here. Correct. The existing wires are going to go to the FET in these two, and then we're going to draw draw two more off of here to go to the 
um, to, to go to the other two inputs on the board that are included in the bundle. Um, right. All right. Let's go back over. Okay, we got everything separate. So let's look at our termination kit here. Okay, so we have pins. We have more pins. We've got two spade lug connectors, and those are going to be for the power supply that are going to go onto these two wires. And then we have the, uh, the five and the three pin connectors that we're going to need to crimp these onto so that they'll plug into the boards. So let's do the easy ones first, shall we? We're going to do these two. This looks to be a nice, soft, flexible wire, so I'm going to twist off just a little bit, or strip off. And this actually, yeah, this feels like a nice silicone wire. I'm going to push that into here. Make sure we see just a smidge at the top. And we are going to crimp this little guy. Right, there's one. And hobby laser, which more or less was the K40 they used there. There we go. That's two. So those are going to get landed onto the power supply. I will strip back the other ends of those later. I don't want to do those until they're ready to go on the board. Um, let's see here. So we have these two. I don't like how that is loose there. Always a good idea why you have it apart even though we're not touching those particular screws, but it's always a good idea to check that everything is nice and tight. Okay, now let's look at the ones that we actually have to terminate here and how many we have. Um, so we have three of the three pins. One, two, three of the three pins. And two of the four pins. So the four pins, one of those is going to be this here stepper driver. Um, this is the extruder driver, which will go to the A designation on there. And the three pins, one of those will be for this fan. I'm assuming one of these will be for the other fan, and the other one will be for the hot end. Everything else should be terminated straight across. Um, before I mess with this fan, however, I do want to ask, uh, this, well, it's not my, Matt, it's not my first smoothie board, um, how do I say this, I have multiple smoothie boards, um, I have many, many smoothie boards, this is actually the first one I've actually got to use, um, they all have purposes and stuff, they're just for builds that haven't happened yet, 
So they're kind of sitting in ready stock, ready to go. And I don't know if all the printers have this or not, but this fan connection that goes over there, um, where it was tied off to the main board, has a connector right in the middle of it that was taped up and taped together. And I don't like that. Um, there we go. So you will love them. I have converted all my machines. Sorry, Ray, I've not tried your board yet. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Yeah, I've, I've, I've heard good things about them. Um, I, I have a very large collection. Um, I have the AZSMZ. Um, I have a couple of the other, uh, both the mini and the full size. MKS S based boards. Um, we, we've got this mini that Ray sent, and I actually have somewhere, I don't know if I have it out here with me. I do. I also have this guy, which Ray can tell you about. Um, that is slated to go onto a CNC here in the near future. That is the uh, Cohesion Remix board, the full-size Remix. All right, so back to what I was pulling out. Um, so Ray, when I separated that, unfortunately I can't get this much closer to show you better. This has a two-pin connector on it already. So will this fit without re-terminating onto the fan? Let's see. And and the short answer is possibly yes that might go on there yep so theoretically I can get that on there without um, I without reterminating that guy so that one's good. Um, so I don't need to, because I separated that split that they had there going to the power supply at the, at the tape, um, you don't have to re-terminate that. If your board just has a solid wire going over, then you will have to, to uh, cut it and terminate it and do the crimp. So that's one check that don't have to do. So that takes us back to these guys. the hot end and to the stepper. So let's start with the hot end first, right? going to use two of these pins for the hot end. Ouch. Ouch. Ooh. Don't do that. That hurts. Uh, yeah, you know what, Ray? You're right. Sorry. Th that shouldn't have been the hot end. That should actually not have been on there. Sorry, this is the hot end does not need to get terminated. Well, crud. 
that's a good thing that I have extras. So let's cut that back off because that is going to go into a screw terminal. Thanks for the correction, Ray. And for those that actually aren't seeing it, sorry, I have a, a direct line with Ray. Ouch. Um, I'm going to put you guys on hold really quick and run in and get a Band-Aid for this, um, or throw some liquid Band-Aid if I can find some on there, just because I don't want to get blood, and I'm trying not to show you guys in case anybody's squeamish, but po pokeyed myself there. Um, so let me pause this really quick. I'll leave the cameras open. Um, I don't have any fancy hold music or anything to play for you. Let me put it there, and uh, let me run in the house and, and put a bandage on this really quick. I will be right back with you. Okay, bandaged, all better, uh, no more blood. Let's see if we can get back to this here. All right, um, so where were we? Ah, uh, yes, so that did not need to be stripped. Um, or I'm sorry, that did not need to be crimped. So we're going to... So what we do need to crimp here is this guy, which is the fan. That was the one that we wanted to do. Note to self, those prongs on the, uh, you can see it there, those prongs on the back side of that little connector uh, where, it, where it busts across, them things are sharp. I 
highly advise not poking yourself with those. One. Let's cut one more off the strip here. Actually, I'm just going to cut all three since we'll need those other two. Uh, unfortunately, I'm sorry. No, actually, I can't. I don't have a way to zoom that camera. Um, and my cable length isn't long enough for me to try to bring it up any closer. All right, so those two are terminated and crimped, although I don't like that one, but we'll see if it goes. Okay, and our other one will be this guy here. So it looks like we have extras. The nice thing about this cable is it's a sort of a ribbon, so you don't necessarily have to worry about getting them back in order. Um, I mean, getting them mixed up. You know, you can just pull them out and terminate them, but you don't have to really worry about what order they go to. Oh, no, unfortunately, sorry, Ashley, I, I can't do that uh, right now while it's live. Oh, you, well, I can try to do that if that gets you a better shot, but I can't really, can't get you much, much more zoomed in at that. Um, the camera's rotated, so if I try to get any larger of a shot, it's digitally rotated. So if I try to get any larger of a shot, it will uh, actually look worse than it does. One. Okay, so I need three more of these. I'll actually have um, a video coming out soon on um, the camera mount I designed to actually hang this hanging uh, camera here uh, from a from a rafter beam. Uh, it's just a it's actually very simple, very very practical. Um, it's more or less a, a 3D printed U shape with a a wing nut on the side, and I tapped it. Um, and of course, I'll explain it more in the video when it's when it's out. But um, it's just a a meter long piece of quarter twenty threaded rod, which goes right into the the tripod mount of the uh, the camera and allows me to hang it there. Um, when it's time to pull it down at the end of the day, I just loosen up the wing nut wing nut and take it back down. So it's a, a really easy, quick, and up. But it's not uh, not perfect by any means, but. Very clever. Handy. That's the word I'm looking for. Ouch, ouch. Okay. So we have all three of the, I'm sorry, all four of those guys terminated. Um, 
Let's see if I can find the others. So that's going to go that way. I guess it really doesn't matter which way these go as long as they go in together, right? Click. When you push these in, they will click. 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 And click. Nope, no click. Why did that one not click? There we go, click. Okay, so click, 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 and click. Nope, that one didn't click. Ah, that one got a little bit smashed. All right, so let's see if we can finagle that guy back off of there without losing our wire. I will. Strip back a hair on that guy. click. There we go. Um, or no, we don't have click. Now we have click. Okay. So that one is there. Now let's just plug this in here to make sure that it all goes in. Yep. Okay. So that one's all set. Now, the, the other one that we terminated here for the fan is going onto a three position, and which goes to the board in that orientation. So, Ray, I'm assuming that looking down at this from this orientation, Based on the drawing I'm seeing, ground is the middle. Oops. Ground is the middle, and then my hot is on the left. Is that correct? No. Oh. Grab a sip while I wait for you to respond. Twelve volts on the left, ground in the middle. Thank you very much. Okay, so twelve volts on the left, ground in the middle. Twelve volts on the left. Which is that one? Ground in the middle. And uh, this one too. If let's see if I can. Unfortunately, the pin is a little bit smashed. I should have checked that before grabbing that one. Let's see if we can open that back up and make it work. So I'm just going to use my needle nose to try to push that in a little more. Okay, that's in there. We're going to fit it to the connector. Okay, Ray, uh, next question for you really quick. 
if you're still there, I see that you're stepping away. Um, I'll, I'll come back to these after you can answer. But so on the board, we have the, the left mini MOSFET, the right mini MOSFET. Which one is the hot end fan? Which one is the parts cooling fan per the uh, configuration file? Um, and while I wait for Ray to answer that, we're going to start plugging in our, our other pieces one by one. So we will, that is our fan. That is our other fan that we just terminated. So we're going to tuck those away, wait for feedback on Ray. These are our hot end and power. Those will go into screw terminals later. Okay. So let's go back and look at our pictures that we took here. And we've got, we don't need this, so let's move it out of the way. Okay, we have black and black, which is this one. Black and black goes to that connector on the board. Black and black goes to the X stop. Okay, and with our stop so the way those pins are it's upside down here trigger and ground so we're going to use the left two pins here to push it onto okay the red one is going to get untangled Hey, Mega Making, how are you today? Okay, the red one is our Y stop, so that is going to go here. The white on white, no, black and white is this one. Black and white is going to be our Z stop. Okay, we do not use the Z max here. And then these two temperature bed and temperature hot end. So the temperature bed, bed temp is going to be black. Let's look at the picture. Bed temp is black. And okay, so uh, while I'm pushing these in, or while I have these here, I want to point out if I can. I really want to get this up here to show you. Um, hopefully, it'll focus there. So the connectors from the stock i3 are not identically mated. Uh, for this board. So they do push this tab out. It is a solid connection, but it may be advisable if you have a hot glue gun. Um, you want to make sure that they're pushed down as far as they can be without breaking. Um, and of course, we're going to test that everything is seated or, or has a signal path. But if you have a hot glue gun, uh, since this thing does hang upside down, you may want to just put a dab of hot glue on those to make sure that they're seated all the way. I don't like the way that those two are sitting, so I'm actually going to take my flush cuts here. Um, and I'm going to trim off this little tab on the edge of the connector. Do that on the edge of this one. 
this doesn't change anything functionally on them. It just cuts out the little, um, hopefully they'll sit together just a little nicer. Side by side and go down a little bit further. Now these, it is also worth mentioning that if you can tell in the picture, um, there's a little bit of a gap because these connectors from the DI3 board are not meant to go, um, are, are not meant for the length of the pin. The pins on the DI3 are much shorter, so they're not going to seat all the way to the bottom. Uh, they are on their good. They do have contact, but they're not going to seat all the way to the bottom. All right, that is done. Uh, let's see. So going back to our fan, it looks like Ray got an answer. FET3, which is the left one, is the part cooling. We'll make room. We'll make the right one for the heatsink fan. Okay, so our heatsink fan is these two, and ground is going to be on the middle, which puts power on the left. And this is going to be our Left one is going to be our part cooling fan. All right, there we go. So those guys are all set. So all we have left to connect here are the extruders and power from both sides. So let's move on to power quick. We're going to use these guys hither, and we're going to strip them. These are the ones that were included in the kit. Um, if you can see what I did there, when I strip these back, I like to pull it back about an eighth of an inch, or a sixteenth of an inch, I'm sorry, or about a millimeter, just enough separate. You can then use the, the end on it there to uh, twist as you pull it off. And you can use that to, um, rather than trying to do the wire with your fingers, uh, to twist the wire. When you pull it out, it comes twisted together nicely. There's a two-pin end stop, but the board has a three-pin end stop. Signal and ground. Uh, yes, Ray, that's correct. That's what I did on the end stops. Okay, so these are going to our main board power, which is going to be in... here. Ground on the left, power in on the right. So we're going to go ground on the left. Hug. Now I do still need to land the other two sides, other side of this onto the uh, power supply. But we'll come back to that. Let's just pull those out of the way for now. The other two that are coming from the power supply are going to go to the heat bed inputs. Notice these are the fatter, heavier wires than the ones provided because the heat bed is going to need more juice. So a MOSFET power in is this guy here. It's going to be positive on the outside. And negative on the inside. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this. So it looks like Monoprice or, or whoever the manufacturer actually is of these tinned the ends of these wires before going into um, the terminal. That is typically bad. So I'm going to 
cut off that. And if anybody tells you otherwise on that, send them my way. Um, I'm going to cut that off and restrip back a bit. And let's see if I can get that there. Sorry, I start talking and then I start working and can't do both at once usually. Um, the reason that's bad, yeah, tinning bad, screw terminal should crush the wire. Exactly, thank you, Ray. That, that's exactly it. Um, you want your wire to flatten out in there so that you have more surface area connecting to the, uh, to the terminal block inside the screw terminal. Um, yeah, thanks, Ray. Yeah, safety is my thing. I've seen, I've seen too many people get, get hurt. Okay, so those sides are all tightened down, so I need to back all of these out. There's, um, can never be too careful when it comes to safety. And I've learned in, in my many years on this earth um, that error on the side of idiot, uh, if, if, if that makes sense. Um, how do I feel about crimp connectors? It, well, I guess it depends on what type of crimp connectors and, and where they're being used. Um, and what they're being used for. Uh, Rick, Rick Stolfel? Is that how you say that? Rick Stolfel? Uh, it's, it's, it's really hard to say because crimp connectors like for power supplies like this are great. I, I would almost go so far as to say that they should be mandatory. Uh, and I applaud them for actually doing that rather than shoving the wires in there. Um, Again, part of that goes back to safety, and it's semi, unfortunately, semi contradictory to what I was just saying about stripping the wires back. Um, a spade connector into a power supply, you do lose a little bit of surface area um, on the crimp, unless you get a really good crimp. When you, when you go into the, into the barrel, um, when you go into the barrel, you do lose a little bit of surface area on that crimp, you get some. But um, as far as the power supply, you get a more solid mechanical connection. And there's less chance of a stray wire separating out to be able to, to, to go from one, uh, one pole to the other. So it, it is actually much safer to use the spades. It's also a much more repeatable connection if you need to loosen up that terminal and remove it. Um, so yes, spades, spades or even better are ring terminals. Rick Soulful. Rick Soulful. Perfect. I will try to get that correct. Okay, so our power supply connections are correct there. And Paul, yes, it does. De obviously, it depends on, on current and, again, the type of connection, whether you're going to a bus bar like this or whether you have something like a grounding bus on a, on a panel. Um, where you're going directly into it. Um, there's many, many different considerations on that. So the hotbed is going to go into the next one. Um, yeah, again, see, these are tinned, and I don't like that. So we're going to chop, chop. I would say at least they used a, what a, looks to be appropriate gauge wiring in this printer for everything. So that is a plus. Um, I have seen a lot of manufacturers that have not, especially the, the cheaper Chinese kits. Uh, yes, the Mega Making, the Mini does support heat boards um, up to a certain size. So it will support... Um, from, from Ray can answer that on the technical side about how large, but it, it will support the, the heat bed on the DI3. Um, anything larger, for example, if you wanted to use this in a CR10 or anything else, uh, this printer is 12 volts. Uh, anything else you would need to use an external MOSFET, which when given the option is not a bad way to go to begin with.
So we are, um, for, for purposes here today, we are going directly to the board and using the built-in um, MOSFET, MOS, yeah, MOSFET on the board. Um, however, if this was a printer I was building from scratch, for example, I would probably err, again, err on the side of idiot, um, in that case, me being the idiot, and I would probably use an external MOSFET um, just because it's a lot cheaper to replace a MOSFET if something blows. It's a $15 MOSFET versus a $120 board. So I tend to err, err on overkill. All right. Our bed is now connected here. Let's see if I can try to get that into the frame. I apologize. I wish I did have a better downward cam, but it was kind of a improvised solution there. Um, so all we have left here is the hot end. The hot end is not polarity sensitive, so it does not matter what orientation these go in. Um, this particular printer, going back to that question, this particular e printer is 12 volts. Uh, however, comma, um, the board itself does support up to 24 volts, I believe. Although the amount of current that it can handle, um, yeah, those Tri-Gorilla MOSFETs are, gr are great. Sorry, I see the chat and I squirrel. Um, those Tri-Gorilla MOSFETs are great, they, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. It's a lot cheaper to burn one of those out than it is to burn your board. Oh, I didn't know the heat sink was not deburred. Uh, that is a good note to pass on. Um, the ones that I've had were came pre-enclosed in an enclosure, so I wasn't exposed to the heat sink on them. Okay. Only thing left to drop in here are our stepper connectors. This is where we're going to need this guy. Um, this is a Y paralleling adapter. Let's see if I can get a good zoom in on that. That basically takes and gives you two sets. I'm sorry, Z paralleling adapter. Gives you two sets and just goes to one. So when this goes on our board here, so we have X, Y, Z or Z for anyone in the rest of the world. That will go there. And I am going to, because of the, oh, these. we're going to try to place these. Okay, so this is where our other board comes back in handy here. We're gonna look at our color coding. So red is Y. Now there's a 50-50 chance that I get the orientation on these correct. Uh, if we find our motors go backwards, all we simply have to do is flip these around. Okay, we have black, which is our X motor. Uh, for now, I'm trying to keep them all in the same orientation. The plus has a 24 volt. Um, That's, that's good to know. Okay, so our, these are going to be our Zs. And we're going to keep those in the same orientation. Um, here. Uh, Ray, a note on this. A, a note on this uh, here. On the future design for this bracket, it might be a good idea, knowing exactly where, where this Z connector is at, might be a good idea to, to build a standoff or something that supports this a little bit so that it's, uh, it's not just floating loosely like that. Just because uh, I feel the pressure as you're trying to, to put the connectors on. So just into the, um, 
the Melzi bracket adapter. Okay, and our last one here is going to go to our extruder. There we go. And folks, I'm going to apologize for a second. I'm going to mute you really quick and see if I can do something about my barking dog. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's see, what did I miss here on the chat? I apologize, I had to get Kona to shush up there. Uh, yes, this is a smoothie-based board. Um, okay, so we have all of our wiring done except for landing these two guys back over here on the power supply. So we're gonna slide this Melzi out of the way. We're going to... this guy up. I'm going to grab the correct size Phillips driver. And there we go. Okay. Uh, word of caution here, especially since we're doing this live on the bench, that I want to caution against is these are live AC, either 110 or 220, depending on what country you live in, on the back of this board, and there is going to be a live spinning fan. So you do want to make sure that you are careful to not have that touching anything there. Um, that it is properly free floating and, and not touching anything. Now this is one small change on this version too. I don't know if you can still see it. This back plate here on previous versions of the, the DI3 or previous flavors, this was a plastic plate. This one is actually metal. So um, the last thing that we need to attach here is the GLCD. Now, I've already connected this to the, the board and made sure Expansion 1 Expansion 2 go to EXP1 and EXP2 here because I was doing the testing on it yesterday. Um, so all we have to do is plug this in here. And that should be everything. Now let's see if we can just clean this mess up here just a hair. Get those out of the way. Since we have a couple of extra connectors here, we're going to put those back in the bag so we can hang on to them in case we had any bad terminations. We could loosen the slack up and just try to get this over here a bit. And we have the knob and the screws up here that we're just going to keep out of the way for now. When I get the Melzi board off of the wood and get it onto the rubber surface. Um, the surface of my desk here, by the way, or the, the bench that I'm using, um, hopefully it's dry. I actually used a product called Flex Seal. Um, that I, I got at local Ace Hardware, but it's a rubberized coating. So I put a, a pretty thick coating of rubber, um, and it's non-conductive. Um, so I put that on the top of this work surface 
So that way I could work on wiring and bare, bare parts and stuff and not have to worry about it shorting out or anything. Um, series in all case six volt steppers on Z is plenty of speed. Okay, I'm deferring. Yeah, I'm deferring the, the I3 plus back over to you there, Ray. It looks like you're already answering. Sorry, the, the chat is out of, out of sequence or delayed for me. And Charlie Pepper, perfect. Okay, uh, this looks like we have everything. Um, oh, SD card. At least we forget that, right? So we do need to take the SD card out and that needs to be placed into here. Now the way Smoothie works is you have a config.txt file that lives on this SD card and that has all of the parameters about your printer on it. Um, as opposed to Marlin, which you know has all of the files that get compiled in. If you need to make any changes to this, you don't have to reflash the firmware, you just change that config file. Um, Cohesion 3D Ray has a config file already uh, developed and tested for the DI3. So theoretically, it's, it's all good at this point. Everything is connected, plugged in. All of our wires pass the, uh, the tug test. So let's, um, let's put some juice on this guy. Let's see, here we have power. Right, you guys ready? Fire extinguisher standing by. Fan spins. Board is booting. I've got flashing green lights. And I don't have anything on my LCD. So something is not sitting right. So let's kill our power. And see what happened here. Ah, uh, did I... Maybe miss a pin. Oh, I put that on backwards. That's right. It should not cover that. All right, let's try this again. We have a long beep, and we have the LCD. Look at that. So, uh, let's tr try a jog. I'm going to go with 10 millimeter movements. Start with the Z first and let's see if it moves up. Whoa. Not good. Okay, so I think we have our Z motion backwards. So let's kill our power. And I am going to flip the orientation of the steppers. I wish there was a way to make that beep go. All right, so let's try jogging this again. Jog, move, Z. Okay, whoa, something happened there. Uh, Ray? What the heck was going on there? I'm going to...
power supply. Okay. Um, power supply. What's what do you mean power supply? That look like the power supply power supply zoning in and out. Well, all of our wiring is correct. We have. All the ins to ins, hots to hots, colds to colds, common, common, common. No shorts, that they're all good. Let's try that again. Okay, um, so we need a different config file for the fan. Um, I would need to get my laptop to to get that. Okay, let's try this again. Jog. Let's try one millimeter movements instead. Z, so let's go. Yeah, it's supposed to be going up, but it's going down. Okay, and let's try the Y. That looks correct. That's right, that's left. Okay, so it looks like I need to reverse those again. Hey Ryan, how are you? Um, yeah, I don't know why the, the power supply did that unless it was trying to protect itself. Okay, so let's, uh, it looks like these were correct the first time on orientation. So let's put them back the way they go. Um, I'm going to guess, or hazard a guess here, the reason we're getting that grinding in, in the slower motion is that the stepper drivers are not at the appropriate uh, voltage, um, or current, I should say. So get that reverse the reversal yep exactly Paul reverse the reversal um, okay so we have break out our handy dandy voltmeter here all right um, so Ray, question for you again, just to verify uh, if it's different with these 4988s on your board versus um, uh, on your board versus the you know a, a ramp or or another board. Um, what is the uh, the preferred V reference voltage for the 4988s on on the uh, the mini? Forty-five to ninety degrees clockwise. I uh, see. Let's, um, I don't have a ceramic screwdriver, but I do have an insulated screwdriver, so let's try that. The flat of the pot faces out, I turn it to face the rightish. Okay, rightish meaning towards the kill button or towards the. Towards which side? Righty tidy, lefty loosey, absolutely. Um, right towards the kill button, turn clockwise. We'll reduce the sidewall platters, I have heard. Okay. Hmm. 
Those two are much lower. I'm just trying to match the voltage across them since I'm not going for an exact voltage. Uh, Ray, I haven't even um, haven't even tried to do a homing yet to to, to trigger to test the end stops. Okay, let's see what that does here. So, um, so for the record, yes, just to show you guys, as, as Ray said earlier, um, normally we'd want to use a ceramic screwdriver for this. I'm actually using an insulated metal one, so it has a rubber. This is rubberized up here, um, but it is metal. The reason I use this is because I can actually pop it out the back, and I have metal at the other end that's exposed. And while this is on there, I can actually uh, attach the meter to it and try to get my, my voltage, if I'm setting to a voltage, um, by using the screwdriver so I can get it dynamically uh, while I'm doing it, instead of tweak, check, tweak, check. Uh, Blade Runner, the biggest improvement I believe that we're, we're potentially going to see out of this is the ability to add a, a BL Touch or other type of leveling device. And as Aspie said, it is a 32-bit um, board. I don't know if on this particular platform if we would necessarily see the benefits of 32-bit um, as opposed to a much larger printer or, or a Delta, but uh, it definitely doesn't hurt. All right. Let's go back and play with our jogs. Um, so let's try our X first. It's going the right way. Where is my X? And stop is where? Uh, where? There it is. Okay, so when I hit the end stop, any of my end stops, it That's our problem. So let's power that down. Let's move all of our end stops over by one. Okay. And let's try this again. Let's power it up.
Okay, end stop doesn't flinch. No reboot, no reboot, no reboot. All right, if we're feeling bold, let's try to home this guy. See what happens. Watch, play, prepare, home all axes. Feels much. So, uh, Ray, initial thought here is it felt like the entire machine vibrated a lot more um, when it was homing. And um, you think that's still under voltage on the, uh, the, the Y steppers? Or I'm sorry, the, the Z uh, stepper driver? Uh, Ryan, yes, uh, Ray is the owner of um, Cohesion 3D, which manufactures the smoothie boards that are going into this. Uh, he's sponsoring the, the stream today and provided the, um, the boards and the kit that we're putting into the, the DI3 here. We're at 90 degrees on the Z driver pot. Feels like not enough. If so, I think we can go another 45. Um, the Z driver pot actually, Ray, was free spinning. It wasn't hitting any walls. So I was just kind of trying to voltage match that one to the other ones. It's at 0.79 volts. And now I'm getting zero volts out of this thing. So 0.79 seems to be about the max voltage that I can get on that particular pot. Otherwise, it uh, rolls all the way back around to zero. So 
let's do prepare. power cycle and uh, before I go digging for a spare raid let's try this one more time and see how it behaves See if you guys can pick that up on the mic. All right. Well, everything seems to be working. All the end stops are triggering. Um, let's try one more thing here. We're going to go back. I'm going to go jog, 10 millimeters, Z. Let's move this thing up off of the hot end. Or, I'm sorry, move the hot end up off of the bed. Ryan, it could. It's definitely not encouraged to do that. It looks like the Y needs a little bump as well. Hmm. Okay. So, next thing that we are going to try here is we are going to prepare go to extruder and we're going to make sure that the extruder turns unfortunately I can only do that with by feel and I can feel it going so it looks like that's working um, okay it looks like I'm going to need to get grab a different config file that Ray sent over to enable those fans. Um, so let me run inside the house quick to grab my laptop so that I can do that for you. And I will be, uh, we'll be right back. Let me, uh, don't go away. Stay tuned.
Okay. Let's power this off so we can remove the SD card. What did I miss there in chat? Chat itself. Um, okay. Ryan, yes, I did power down uh, before I, I swapped those around. If, if you missed it. All right, let's see if we can get this updated config file that Ray had sent over. I'll go to email. Okay, and I got your file, Ray. I'm going to make one minor change to it. Um, edit, open with text edit. GLCD. Okay, I'm going to 26, 25. Okay. Uh, the one custom change that I just made to the file that Ray sent over was I reversed the pins on the encoder wheel uh, to change the, the direction that they run. Just a personal preference for me, but I don't like the way that Smoothie feels backwards to me coming from uh, Marlin and Repeater. Um, I don't like turning counterclockwise to go up and clockwise to go down. It, it seems uh, counterintuitive. So let's pop this new config file in here and let's see what that does. Give it some juice. Okay. All right. Um, so let's see if we can turn these here fans on and the hot end on. So let's go to configure. Oops, I'm sorry. Go to prepare. Let's do a extruder. Nope, back. Let's do a preheat and let's see what that takes us to. Okay, that's trying to heat the bed to 185. I'm sorry, trying to heat the bed to 60 and the hot end to 185. I see both of those climbing. However, neither of my fans have kicked in, right? Um, okay, the hot end fan just kicked in, so that is good. Uh, Ray, since I'm not overly familiar with the smoothie menu on this, where do I go in the menu to turn on the parts cooling fan?
Okay, yes, the heat, okay, the heat sink fan did kick in at 50 degrees, that's correct. Uh, where do I go in the menu to try to make sure that the cool or the uh, parts cooling fan kicks in? Back. I do not see that in the menu anywhere. We can add a custom menu option in config. Okay, great. So consider that a request for the config for this is the ability to uh, turn that on or off and set speeds. Um, so I will need to connect with repeater or something to, uh, to validate that then, yes? Um, all right, so actually with that said, let's try that. We have USB cable. We have our laptop here now. Um, and it hasn't been mentioned earlier. I know we've been talking about the DI3 because that's what we're doing the upgrade on. But, and that's what this, this kit is targeted at. Um, but theoretically, this should also work f for anybody wanting to upgrade, uh, for example, a CR10 or, or any printer of that nature. Um, because those are all based on the Melzi board as well. So let's go back to the main camera. Um, let's fire up the laptop here. Going to connect USB. Okay. So Ray, does the um does it not show up on does Smoothie require a driver for OS X to show up or should that auto detect? Um, you don't do that version mini, one version all soldered. No drivers for Mac, nor Windows 10 necessary. Okay, then. Um, oh, here we go. It's now showing up as mounted USB. Okay, it just took a while to show up, I guess. So perfect. So that is there. So I should be able to go to repeater host Mac. Um, the only reason I wanted to use repeater was I wanted to be able to see this fan turn on and off uh, before we go back and we reinstall all of this in the box. I want to make sure that that fan is good. So let's try connecting. Um, preferences. Printer settings. Can use repeater for that test. Got it. Except for it is not showing up on the, what is the baud rate? Maybe that's my problem. What is the stock baud rate, Ray, for connecting to it in repeater? Fifteen two hundred. Thank you. Okay. Hmm. 
doesn't seem like it's could not connect port for so it's showing up as a as an SD card in Explorer basically but I'm not seeing the serial port let's see ping pong All right, let's try something else here. That doesn't want to play nicely. So let's close repeater. Let's try Simplify 3D. We're just going to go to Tools, Machine Control Panel. Great, it looks like it's talking. So. Let's see if I can tell it to you home. 185.59, tool one. Movement. Keep it fan speed. Here we go. Fan speed 100%. And we have moving fan here. Should probably use the other finger there. So that was the last thing that I wanted to check. So let's power this guy off. And um, let's, let's put this thing back in its own, uh, own case. Move my laptop down here. I'm going to try to let that cool a bit as I try to slide this over and out of the way and we're going to uh, pop this guy here back out and we're going to start putting this guy together take the USB cable off for now yeah simplify 3D talk to smoothie great um, repeater was a, not seeing the the serial port correctly on the Mac. Um, I always default back to, unfortunately, when I'm dealing with, with the Mac, because I'm a Mac guy, um, I always default back to, is it truly compatible you know, with the Mac? So there's, there's always suspicions on that front. OK. At least I forget, we're going to pull the power off. Try to slide these into here. Okay, uh, Ray, we just hit our first little snag here. Um, let me go back to the upper camera. Okay, so uh, Ray, first little snag that I've hit here is these two wires that you've provided for the power supply um, are too short to allow you to put the board into the box. Um, the power, there, there's not enough slack on, on those wires uh, as, as opposed to the other, you know, the other power wires um, coming from the power supply for the, uh, for the other side. These two guys here, you know, there's, there's plenty of slack to move the board in. These other two are too tight to get it in there. So we are going to have to improvise that somehow. Um, and 
pull those off of there and try to hopefully get it back together on the other side, or I'm going to have to replace those with longer wires, which I don't happen to have ready to go here. See if we can get that. To there. Uh, that might be an option, Ray. Um, sorry, I saw your your offline. Um, that might be an option. I need to to see how the, how well this is going to work to a fit. It's not a showstopper. We will work around it. Here. And yes, yeah, swapping those between the FETs is definitely an option, but I want to hold off on doing that until after I get it mounted, um, purely because I wanted to, to be able to give you a distance feel for that. Kona, shush. Get it in the hole here. Ouch. Yeah, Aspie, it's, um, it's not easy to flip it the other way because of um, where the, the SD card and the USB connectors are um, on the box and where the clearance is between the, the, the case and the outer wall. Um, I think Ray said clearance to the walls. Right, exactly. But there's always other ways. We are not stranded here yet. One thing I am prayful of is that I am really hoping that the um, the, L, uh, the the LCD being behind the metal box like this, or inside the metal box, I should say, I'm really hoping that dampens the buzzer uh, because that buzzer is kind of a buzz kill when you first boot the thing up. I may end up having to. Uh, desolder that from the board or something if there's no way to to turn it off um, or that's a question I guess Ray and firmware is there a way to turn that off in the in the config file so it doesn't buzz every time you power it up uh, because that could be really really annoying if you 
wanted to turn this thing on, say, in the middle of the night when the rest of the household is sleeping. And I don't know if that's just a smoothie thing or... So, um, Ryan, this is not going to... For me, this isn't going to live permanently in this box. This is actually going to get mounted to a rack plate um, so that it can go across the front of the Ikea stand that I have for this. Uh, basically a, a front mount panel and get rid of the box. Um, so I, I will plan on doing some custom options for that. Okay. These are our two wires here. That are for power. Let me let me see something really quick. I'm still with you. You just won't see me for a second. Okay, adapter and overcome. Uh, rather than pulling out those other two power cords and pulling them back, I am going to improvise and um, basically use my own wires to extend those. Hey, Duo, how are you? Buzzer is a Ray thing. It's feeding off an I2C pin, which is pulled up by default. So the buzzer is on for four seconds. It takes smoothly to boot. Black table enclosure. Yep, exactly. Um, yeah, Ryan, mine is that it isn't actually enclosed, but it is. You know, I never finished uh, sealing it off. But that's an option that I've uh, left on the table. But I, I do have a three stack lack. Three stack. Yeah, three stack lack. Um, just because it was a very convenient way to, to house it. It is an awesome Saturday for home projects. All right. And we have the other crimper is where? Down here. May not have any more uh, of the 4988 stepper drivers left uh, in my archives since most of my stuff is now the DRVs. Three stack lack, 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 three stack lack. I think that was at least 10. Can't say it any faster. Um, but so we have enough length on these to go from there to. there comfortably so we're going to cut it off there and that gives us yeah good so ray i'm just replacing those with wires i i have on hand uh since it's easier than moving the other wires and i don't have to come back and undo it later um, 
So what you're telling me on the buzzer, since that's built in, the only way I'm going to get rid of that is if I desolder it from the header uh, and get it off the darn board to begin with. Is that what I'm hearing? Hey, RJ Makes here. Welcome, RJ. So we're going to pull these out, set them aside. See if I can get it back in the hole. Solder trace on the bottom of the mini board. No need to touch the buzzer. Okay, that sounds like something that's doable too. Okay, we are going to route these under this. I'm trying to organize this a bit. ground. Drop in the hot. All right, that is there. Now, I would going to, this is what my plan is. Um, I guess theoretically there's a lot of ways that you could get that USB to the outside. Depending if you wanted to cut any holes in the sides here where the existing ones were not and try to put on a panel mount or something of that nature. Um, what I'm going to attempt to do is I'm going to put mine in and I'm going to try to run it out the back and just leave a permanent cable because I can always coil it. So, we are going to try to um, I will be revisiting this at some point after today because I will be um, theoretically adding the Ethernet upgrade to this as well. So that is something that is on the horizon. So something is not lining up or pulling there. Sorry, this is in the frame, but I'm trying to get that pushed in. Okay. Good run. Uh, Ray, can you, yeah, yeah, Ryan mentioned the, uh, the optical sensor, which is also um, something that we cannot do, you know, with the stock Melzi in these. Um, how difficult is that to add to the Mini? Is that just a matter of tapping the Z-Max that's unused? Now here comes the challenging part, is to try to get this all shoved back on here. Without breaking anything or anything coming loose, or... Give me a 
those fun things. I think this is the most physically challenging part of the whole thing is putting this darn box back together. So my plan worked there. Uh, the USB cord just came out. If you guys, if you guys can see that there, um, the USB port I just ran out of the back, so it's permanently attached. And if you had gotten an SD card extender, you could either run that through the USB port on the side, um, or you could possibly run it out the back like I did here. Get the rest of these screws in. And standing three hours. How are we doing on time? What time is it now? Uh, we started at noon, it's 2.30, so two and a half hours in. I appreciate you guys for sticking with this. I mean, I hope it's, um, I hope I'm getting all your questions answered on, on how the upgrade works and showing you how simple it actually is. Um, let's see, there's one more screw on the back here that I missed. I know I used the power tools to take this apart. However, when I put it back together, I prefer to do it by hand because um, I don't want to over torque it. I just kind of like to get a feel for where it's at. So uh, if anything, I would have used the power tools just to get it started and then, you know, slowed it down from there. So let's see what we got. Now, I do want to say, I think I lost a little bit of slack in the bundle. Um, I'm going to go around to this side and make sure I'm good, because that's where it, it sits in this orientation. Um, for me, let's see if we can, there we go. So I did lose a little bit of slack in this. But I think it's it's there. We've got the USB cable out the side. Um, I used a longer, thinner one that I just had picked up at Micro Center because um, I wanted to be able to connect it to anything. Ah, need to put the the knob back on. There we go. And look, we'll take that off. So let's get some juice back on this thing and make sure that we did not break anything in the process of putting it back in there. Ready? Here goes nothing. Four seconds. Welcome to Smoothie. So we have the display back up. Um, and we did it. Now when I pulled that out to copy the config file back over, um, I actually also copied a, um, some G-code onto the, so I already have G-code in here. But when I plugged it into the laptop, it just shows up in Explorer or Finder if you're on a Mac as just like plugging in a flash drive. So you can copy files over that way, or like we said earlier, um, you can get the, the micro SD card extender and pull it out. As Ray reminded me before the stream, and sorry if I'm, Trying to reach off camera for a couple of paper towels here. 
Um, as Ray me, reminded me before the stream, you don't want to pull the SD card while it's live. Um, you want to make sure you power it down, pull out the SD card, put the SD card back in, and that will um, you know, allow it to, to not lose its configuration settings or anything. Um, I just want to make sure nothing is loose in there. If I wasn't going to go back in and do other modifications on this, I would most likely break out the heat gun and um, like the way that they did with the original, since the board is now hanging from the top upside down, the little dab of glue from the heat gun probably is not a bad idea. And I have no more iced tea. All right, so I'm going to grab a bottle of rubbing alcohol quick. Um, or IPA, as many of you call it. And uh, since we've been moving this thing around, I'm going to wipe down the bed surface with IPA, try to get it nice and clean. And there's uh, some leftover hairspray on here, so it doesn't need to be perfect, but I want to try to get it at least smoother a little bit. And this will be um, the next upgrade this printer will be getting here in the next week or so um, is the new flex plate system from uh, BuildTAC. Uh, I had been sent one of those and um, so that's going to be going on top of the glass. I'm going to pull off the stock Monoprice uh, BuildTAC underneath it. The glass is going to go on top of that and uh, you know what, let's get you back to the main cam. There we go. So the glass will come off um, like this. I, I use the, uh, the Geno pad on the bottom to keep it down. This will, will be heated and be pulled off as well. Um, the glass will, will go back down and then the, the flex plate system from BuildTAC will go on top of that. Um, so I wanted to do kind of a double test on that, that flex plate system um, and this seemed like the perfect printer to do it. One of them is I wanted to be obviously able to text the flex plate itself and the, the newer versions of BuildTAC to see how the adhesion is on that. But because it's just a, a piece of metal that's held on by magnets, it makes it very easy to swap out um, so that I can, I can test it with, uh, for example, Peopolis, the uh, creators of Moai have their own build surface, which I've been testing on my Delta, um, but I would like to test on this as well. So that flex plate system will make that really easy to swap out without theoretically having to re-level. Um, also going to be adding a BL touch to this guy. All right, so that is there. Let's do a home on the menu. And I'm going upside down here, so hopefully I'm finding it. Prepare. Home all. And move. Okay, that did not sound good. Something came loose on there. Uh, in the process of shifting all that over. So let's fire it back up and see what we screwed up here. Let's try our end stops first. Okay, all of our end stops are triggering correctly. So let's jog our axes one at a time until we figure out which one is screwing us up. X. X is good. Y is good. Z is good. Z 
So let's see why did that. Home all axes. Oh. Okay. Um, so Ray, even though that end stop does not appear to be triggering properly, um, the Y end stop doesn't appear to be. No, the X carriage is, is fine, Aspie. It's the uh, the Y carriage. Um, are you talking about the slope on this uh, cable chain here? On that. Yeah, end stop does not look to be registering. So, did I knock something loose when putting it all back together, or, or what? Let's uh, let's find out. And I don't know if you guys can see this wobble here, but that's actually uh, how warped the aluminum plate is on this. The, the heater plate. So that's pretty bad. Um, I need to get some clamps on that. Um, let's bust back out the laptop and see if we can figure out what's going on before I pull this thing back apart. Let's try a little G-code troubleshooting. And we can move these guys back out of the way here since they are no longer needed. Darn power tools. Okay, laptop. Oh. Let's see here. Logged in. See if we can connect. Connecting connection. Okay. So M one one nine. Oh, connection failed. Okay. So M119, X min 0, Y min 0. So let's push our end stop, send it again. Zero, zero, zero. Zero, zero, zero. X triggers, no X. Be triggered, no trigger. Why triggered, no trigger. All right, so what that's telling me, unfortunately, is that while stuffing it, I must have knocked that end stop loose. Um, and I hear the concern with the buzzer. Oh, sorry, Ray, I hadn't seen the chat. Yes, one, M119 is one I am well versed in. Um, dealing and troubleshooting with BL touch issues, the M119 is my best friend out of many of the, the G codes. All right, so I'm going to try to rotate this a little bit. Um, I'm not going to switch to the upper cam just yet. Um, Good night. You've all seen what's inside of here, and all I'm trying to do is troubleshoot that one connector that apparently doesn't seem to be registering. So I'm going to try to disassemble this as quickly and as judiciously as possible here. Oh. Okay, so 
so the back is off. And worth noting, I did pull the power before doing that. Um, all right, power, power tool warning going off. Okay, much faster. So let's try to disassemble this, shall we, in as minimalist fashion as practical. Okay, so it was our, I only see two end stops. I see the other end stop just hanging. So that would explain why we had a problem. And this is why those dabs of hot glue gun are probably not such a bad idea. All right, that's back in. Let's see if we can. back together. I believe these are all the same. Missing here in the chat. Uh, 8825's is quieter. Thinking of a build. Duet Wi Fi also will this work with Pi and Octoprint? Making sure that's seated. Runs great. Smoothie board printer with Octoprint Pi runs just fine. Sorry, guys. I'm, I see you guys answering your cell phone questions, and, and Ray's being very helpful there. So I'm uh, just trying to get this going back as quick as possible. can run 6 access Okay, so that's there. Good so. Paul, the remix may fit in this box, but it would be probably not the best idea. Um, it's it's really large. It would be 
awkward to get at the connections and you probably don't have adequate airflow um, inside of this particular box for it just because of the power supply being inside of there. If you remove the power supply from this case, it, it would most likely definitely work. Um, in fact, here, let's try something. Uh, since I have that put back together, let's slide this over here. And oh, I really don't like how tight that is, but it is what it is. Um, let me go back to this other camera angle. Okay, you guys can see that, right? Let me pull out my bag of tricks here. So short answer there's uh, without some minor modifications which could be done to the board to possibly um, replace the orientation and make these vertical entry um, for, for the MOSFETs, uh, it will not fit inside the box. It's too much of a close call. That is a, a remix on this board or on this box. Any way you slice it, it's going to be because it's pretty much a square box or square board. In a way you slice it, there's too much here, there's too tight. Now, I guess we could also look at it from a different perspective of vertically and no difference. It's pretty much square. So that option's out. All right. Let's get this untangled. Okay, here we are. We're back up. Let's grab our power cord. Yeah, that's got to go. Uh, the X. Um, Remix or anything else? Uh, actually, yeah, it, it is not levels because when the steppers ran away earlier, the, the whole thing got shifted. Um, I need to re recalibrate that or, or uh, re blueprint that before we try any printing. Let's see. So it looks like all end stops are working as they should. There we go. Um, discussing panel duo support. Also, the MKS TFT might work. Needs to help me out with that. Its firmware is shit. Practical ring still needs to help me out with that. Which, which board is that duo? Oh, the MKS? All right. So it looks like all of our end stops are triggering correctly now. So what I am going to do is turn this back off. I am going to unplug my two steppers down here on the X. And we are going to get this. Sucker back in alignment. All right, I need, where did they go? Ouch.
Okay. Razor blades have uh, multiple uses. If you're careful with them, they actually are great for getting that spacing up at the top. Um, okay, plug in these extruders back in. I'm sorry, these steppers back in. Uh, okay, the reason I unplug the steppers is because when you turn the steppers manually to adjust them like that, they actually work as a generator um, and they, fe they feed back voltage basically back down into the controller board. If I did it, it would be sounding like deet, 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 and it would be triggering the buzzer every time it did. Um, but it also back feeds and it's not good for the board to do it. So it's always... Um, it's always the best practice if you can when you're manually driving your steppers, especially that far up the gantry, to unplug them if you have the option. Um, at the very least, unplug one of the two so that they don't fight each other. Option similar to MKSDFT, but not as it. Uh, Duo, that already exists. It's a, uh, a Raspberry Pi running OctoPrint with the, um, uh, I forget the name of the plugin, but there's a plugin intentional. It's not super pretty, but there is a plugin. Now comes the fun part. Let's see, hopefully those are long enough to clip onto there. And disrupt our leveling. All right. So let's turn this back on. Squirrel alert. That's correct, Ron. Yes, the LCD panel powers up because of the backfed voltage. Okay, we're going to home all. If all goes well, we're going to be leveling the bed and um, we're going to be printing with this. Filament One, the uh, US distributor for filamentum, sent me this roll um, of uh, vertical, bleh, vertical gray, vertigo, vertigo, vertigo gray uh, to do a review on, but also so that we had something to throw on the DI3 with this stream uh, for our first test print. So, We've got that set. I'm going to, uh, now that I no longer need this instructions or I can print it back up. Um, actually. I'm going to cut myself a strip off there. Vertical gray is right, is beautiful. Um, I don't need to do the, the 119, Ryan, because it successfully homed and, and all of them tripped this time. Uh, but I do need to power it back off so that we get free motion here. And let's find out how far out of level we've knocked this thing. Apparently way off because that's all the way. Wow. So if you guys can hear that squeal, um, that is the stepper motor on the x-axis and the y-axis as I'm driving it back and forth, back feeding in um, and triggering powers up on the board.
Now this is part of the reason why I wanted to get a BL touch on here. Warped aluminum plate does not do this thing any favors. Okay. Bed level's not perfect here, um, but I don't want to spend too much time on it because as soon as we're done, this is getting moved back into the house into its um, triple stack lac enclosure. And um, so it's uh, going to have to get re-leveled again as soon as I get it in the house. So it's close enough that I think I can get a print out of it. So let's open up this box of beauty here. And for those that are not familiar with filamentum, that was probably loud in the mic. Let me try to move it down here. Um, who have never used their filament, they ship in these, um, these gray foil type uh, UV proof bags. They're, they're actually sealed at the top um, and they have like a, a Ziploc style uh, opening to them. Um, looks like I didn't get past all the glue there. See, easy bot. So it it shields it. So if you have PLA, which breaks down in in UV light, um, there's also uh, the uh, desiccant in the bag. The other really cool thing they do is they have clear spools, uh, spool holders. Um, so you can see. That one's cracked, but it's not in measure or insurmountable. Um, they provide you clear spool holders so you can actually see how much you have left, which is really, really cool. Let's pull this down. Try to get this started and walk around to you. Prepare. Oh, that's John. Extruder. Settings. Hmm. Okay, Ray, there's, um, I don't see temperature on here anywhere. Oh, there we go. It's that temperature. Okay, hot end. Set this up around. Two. 
200. Back. Back. Let's do a jog. Move. See. When I get that up off the bed. And. Benchies are not practical. Um, vertical, yes, vertical gray is beautiful. You have the next spool ready. Okay, right, so let's get this back to the watch. Okay, um, we're actually going to do two things. We're going to go back to that paper towel. And air spray. Put a little little hairspray on there. Benji for external use only. My voice support. Yeah, Ray, doesn't your board have uh, custom modified firmware that detects Benji G code and automatically deletes it? Isn't that a feature? We are at 200 degrees. So let's see if we can. Hoping I don't have a jam or anything in here to fight. And it looks like we do. Mm. Son of a gun. Okay. Um, I guess we get a uh, don't try this at home moment, moment out of this then. So I just connected this, this fan on the side here um, because it's blowing with the hot end up around 200 degrees because I want that hot, but I want to pull this out. Uh, Ray, it's beyond a, a cold pull, well, potentially, but it's actually um, broken off below the, uh, the gear, I believe, or at least I need to verify that. Um, actually... Blaming the cats on this one. Uh, I had thought I had unloaded filament on this before using it last time, but apparently the cats unloaded it by breaking it. Part two about adding auto level. Um, Auto level will will be coming. I need to find a mount that I want uh, to do first. 
I'm not sure if that's going to be a live stream or if that's something that I'll um, just do as a video. Uh, TBD on that. So I'm breaking the, the rules that I told you guys earlier. I'm actually unplugging steppers with it live and doing things um, with it live because I need to get access to this while it's hot. Ah, come back here. Okay, so there's no brute. And filament inside there. It is broken inside there, but theoretically I can do that and get the filament out. So now all we have to do Easier just to pull that off of there like that. What are, never printed a fidget spinner, no plans to. Uh, okay. In case anybody ever wanted to wonder, wondered how to uh, clear a jam on a DI-3, pulling your hot end apart under load is that easy. It is actually surprisingly as budget conscious as this printer is. Did I lose the spacer? No, I think I got him there. Nope, got all the spacers there. Oh, oh, hey Jeff. Thanks for tuning in. Okay. Step her back in. Again, perfect world, I would not be doing that under, under load uh, or plugging in the fan under load. But, again, I wanted to do that while it was hot. So, fan is spinning again. We can try to reload this sucker. We have extrusion. All right. So, uh, since we let that sit so long, just for good measure, I'm going to reapply some hairspray. And 
Squirrel. Okay, we are going to go to play. SD card. System volume. SPLA 5 millimeter calibration tube. We're going to watch. Right now it is at 200, heating to 200. The bed is at 30, heating up to 60. And we'll see if it prints at this point. Then we can call it a day, say yay, fun. And uh, see where everybody goes. Get back to the important things like um, power washing our houses and you know what you said you were doing, RJ? Power washing the house. All right. Two hundred. We're at forty-one. It's not quite. Hot enough to cook tacos on yet, but it's warming up. Uh, yep. I still need to power wash the hell the house. I haven't tried the uh, Micro Swiss yet, Paul. Um, I've heard great things about it, but uh, I've kind of resisted because until this mod, I've mostly wanted to keep this printer as stock as possible. Um, it, the DI3 is my safety net. I mean, my other printers are are either home brews or complete hacks that have you know started off life as other things and have have evolved a lot. Um, and I don't know why I'm talking to the computer screen instead of talking to the camera. Um, so I don't know. I kind of wanted to keep this one as close to stock as possible. Um, but when Ray approached me about doing this upgrade, it it seemed like. A, a smart plan because it does afford me the option of getting auto leveling on here um, or properly said auto bed compensation um, especially since that aluminum plate down there is warped just so badly um, mini monster trucks uh, like stompers we had when we were kids Ryan the little tiny ones with battery took a triple-a battery and had foam wheels those were probably long gone by the time you were old enough to play with them. So the, the first print set to go is just the, um, the five millimeter calibration cubes. Oh, Curtis, you made it. Right in time for the end. The grand finale. No smoke yet. That is good. Um, we we caught caught all the smoke before it actually burned. There it goes. But I'm not used to being behind the printer with the tweezers. Leveling is definitely awful. 
see if it corrects enough on the next layer. I may have actually sliced this at a 0 0.06, which is explaining why our first layers are so, so thin. So why this uh, tries to get some layers built up, it doesn't look like there's much on there yet, but um, unfortunately I won't be able to make it to Bay, Bay Area, or not Bay Area, New York Maker Fair either. Um, I am hoping to make it back to Murph next year, but we'll have to see how it goes. Um, let's see there. but So yeah, I slice this at very, very thin layers, which is why I'm not seeing a buildup. So I wanted to uh, give it a chance to try to get through a couple of layers and see if, you know, make sure that we are extruding correctly and that we're not having any issues. Um, probably should have sliced it thicker for the first layer. But I do see it finally starting to add some, so. Uh, you know what? Let's kill it. Screw it. Let's see what happens here. I'm impatient. Ouch, that's warm. I'm impatient. Oh. It's just a five millimeter calibration pyramid. Nothing big. Um, it's just fast and quick to make sure that we're hitting all the axes in the uh, right directions. But I'm going to boot that darn thing up. Log into my laptop here. Exit. Exit there. We're going to go over here to Cura. And let's try this again. Save to file. Call this s-pla-calibration steps. We're going to overwrite it. Minimize, minimize. Open Finder. And this should have shown up here. Come on, give me the drive. Give me the drive. Show me the money. It's the uh, the pyramid, the five millimeter calibration cube pyramid. Um, tags, where is this? Hmm. All right, Ray, this isn't showing up. Let's try letting it boot first. Frozen, look at the LSCD, disconnect the USB term. Okay, that's what I just did, but it's still not showing up here. 
but let's try it one more time. Smoothie ready, plug it in. And still not showing up here. So just for giggles and shiznits, let's try plugging it into my other USB port. Still not showing up. Am I not waiting long enough here? Smoothie ready. Menus work. Still not showing up. Hmm. Let's try this finder. Let's relaunch finder, see if it shows up. There it is. Okay, so we're going to delete that file, copy that file, play, SD, let's try this again. All right. Um, so it's connected now. Let's try this again. So it's trying to hit 60. And um, yeah, basically just increase the layer height to 0 0.2 so that we make sure that we get something extruding instead of that super thin that went through the first time. All right, so while this heats up to summarize, um, while this heats up to try to print though, let's summarize what we did for the people that weren't here at the beginning of the stream um, and some of the, just the, the known items about this particular upgrade. Um, for those that have been with us the entire time, bear with me for repeating it. But so what we did is we pulled out the Melzi board that was in here, uh, which has fixed limited firmware and limited capabilities, and the LCD. Uh, we pulled out both of these, and um, we replaced them with a Cohesion 3D mini board, which is, uh, runs smoothie firmware. Um, Ray from Cohesion 3D has been in the chat. Awesome, Ryan. Thanks. We'll see you next time. Thanks for hanging in with us for a while. Um, so back to what I was saying, it, we, we upgraded the motherboard to the smoothie. Um, I walked through the process of doing that, showing the terminations that needed to be done, the cabling, at least for the uh, version 2.1. Uh, the adapter plate that goes inside of here and, and any of the, the minor wiring changes. Um, 
gosh, it is now 3.30 my time, so we've been going three and a half hours. I most likely probably could have completed this in an hour, you know, had we not been interacting and, and with, with better documentation, um, which that's part of the video today. Cohesion 3D did sponsor this stream and provided the board so that we could use this document, or so they could use this documentation in this video later um, as kind of a how-to on how to do the upgrade. Now, a couple of the limitations and things to note on there is you do lose the, uh, the USB card, and the USB port and the micro SD card slot that are active on the side of the, uh, the DI3 box. Um, instead, you have a couple of different options. One is you can do what I did, and I just permanently connected a USB leash, basically, and ran it out of the box with the rest of the bundle. So I can just coil it up and tuck it beside it. Um, if you needed to get to the micro SD externally, it's not included in the kit, but for just a few dollars off of Amazon or uh, your, your favorite online retailer, you can pick up a micro SD extension, which you could run out the side of the box and basically give yourself a connection point to move the micro SD outside of the box. Unfortunately, because the board isn't designed exactly to the shape or the positioning of the Melzi, you know, those controls are in different places, so they have to be extended some way. Um, other options there are if you wanted to, you could cut holes into the metal enclosure so that you had access to those ports and, and reorientate the box inside. The LCD does get replaced with a RepRap Discount G LCD, which is available from Cohesion 3D, or you can provide your own if you already have one or if you have another resource for it. Uh, it does take an interface board that is different than the ramps and that has to be purchased from Cohesion 3D to be used with their mini board. Links to the boards are down in the description available for you. Um, this does run smoothly, and we are in the process of heating up the bed so we can try to do a test print now. So all goes well. Um, we, will, we will have the print going here in a few minutes and we can call the stream, um, we can call the stream good. And I can get some food. Oh. Uh, thank you, Ray. Yeah, um, instruction manual will be good, and hopefully some of the feedback from doing this real time, um, like those cables that we found that should be longer, will, um, will help with that. Oh. I guess while we wait for this to heat up, if anybody watching has any questions for me, uh, now's a good time since I can put my attention on the chat. No, no questions? Well, let's see what happens here. What's for lunch? I don't know, Curtis. What are you barbecuing for me? I'm waiting for delivery. I'm hoping it's something that smells like tacos and tastes like tacos and looks like tacos, though. Preferably carne asada. Definitely do. Uh, it is a um, it is a neat little board. The the steppers do sound um, different. Um, than they did with the with the Melzi board. I um, didn't spend a lot of time trying to dial in the um, the 4988 uh, stepper drivers on these. Um, those are the ones that that Cohesion 3D provides and and has available. To be honest, I'm probably going to replace those with either the uh, the 2100s or the DRV 8825s. Um, not because of the micro stepping, but I just I have those drivers in abundance, so they're they're ready swap spares for me. Um, and I, I don't again I don't know why I'm looking at, at the computer instead of you guys because that's where the chat's at. Uh, but I do have other driver boards. So once this build is done, I pr I plan to continue modding this a bit and um, swapping in some different stepper drivers. So I didn't spend a lot of time trying to dial those in. They weren't getting hot and they were driving things. Uh, but it is going to take some time to dial in, you know, the E steps and stuff. 
and this does not seem to be changing. It's frozen. That would explain why it's taking so long. Okay, there it goes. All right, so Ray, I guess here's a question for you and learning curve for me on the smoothie. Um, I unplugged this from my, I started the print, but I unplugged it from my laptop and, and pulled the USB cable while the print was running. Is that what caused it to freeze up? Is that a, a no-no with smoothie? You taking off, RJ? Thanks for coming and staying by. Oh, sorry. I'm I'm catching the chat on delay. And now it actually seems to be heating appropriately. The, the menus on this definitely are going to take some getting used to. You're here till 7. I won't be. You do need to dismount the drive. Okay, that's got it. So I didn't dismount the drive. I just yanked the cord. Um, I, I get it. I, I think that might be an OSX thing, it is, or is it the same in Windows? Hey, thanks, Keith Developer, for uh, hanging out with us. Um, hope you have a great rest of your weekend. And I want to see this thing printing. I'm not expecting a pretty first print because I didn't spend a lot of time leveling the bed, but. Um, I do want to get something off of it so we can call it a success. All right. to dismount it and all operating systems but manifest worse than OSX. That would explain it. Alright, thanks Ray. Uh, that's good to know. Oh, and while this warms, let me step off frame for a second here and let the dog back in the house. Okay, temps are getting close. Looks like it's about ready to go. Um, I let the dog out actually, that was my fault. I'm the only one home, he was barking in the house. Uh, probably at the mailman. Okay, I see motion. Fingers crossed here.
There we go. I see plastic getting laid down. Okay. Um, well, when I give it a manual assist here, I should say, when I give it a manual assist, I see uh, I get extrusion. So um, it looks like I'm going to have to spend some time going back to the stepper drivers and uh, playing with the voltage a little bit more. Um, it feels like I'm not getting enough of a turnover on those guys. Um, so that means I got to rip this whole box apart. So I think I'm going to call it there. Then um, this is in you know by no means the the product. It just the adjustments that need to happen after you do something like this. Um, so I'm going to call it. I think right there. And um, uh, thank everybody for watching. Um, we'll post updates. The I do plan on with the board features that it supports. Um, it does support Ethernet. I'm waiting to get a cable made so that it, the, the board can be mounted in a different orientation than it's intended on the board because of the, the power supply. So it, there's not enough room in there for it. Um, it has to be remoted off. Um, so we, we will be looking at trying to do the Ethernet upgrade for it. Eventually, I'm going to add a BL Touch to this, and that may be live, or I may just uh, do a video on that and show it happening. Uh, we'll have to look and see how much work is involved with it. Uh, thanks, doing. Um, yeah, I do hope everybody liked it. I'm not going to sit and make you guys watch a jam. In fact, I'm going to kill this and. Kill that and pull the filament out before we do get a jam since that extruder doesn't appear to be turning. Um, and go back and revisit that. But I need to get some food, I think, in me before I do that. So uh, I think we'll call it there, unless anyone has any last minute questions for me. Um, anyone? Anyone? Give the chat a second to catch up. Awesome. Uh, you're very welcome, Ray. Um, I will will reach out to you shortly. Um, if anybody has questions, you guys all know how and where to find me on uh, Twitter and whatnot. Um, I did throw the comments together very quickly on this one before the stream, but I'll, I'll try to get that um, updated here before the you know the video gets out there a bit and. Um, Try to get any other information into the comments. Uh, I think I do have a link to the uh, the kit for the Cohesion 3D, but um, I want to make sure it, it, those that don't know where to find me, how you can find me on Twitter. Uh, that's usually where I'm lurking at. Um, it's easiest way to go mobile, and um, I'll keep you guys posted on this and uh, let you know when we're going to do any more updates on it. And wow, that box is warm. Anyways, thanks for playing, everyone. We're going to call it there. I'm going to slide over here, and I'm going to stare. I'm going to do the Dustin stare. Ready? <laughs>